Good morning. How many of you are happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Happy to be able to, to fellowship with, with each of you and, and hug on you, love on you, talk to you. It just brings a smile to my face. So I'm so grateful that you all are here to worship this morning. We're going to let everybody kind of get in. For those of you online, um, God bless you. Good morning. Uh, we are going to get ready to, to worship and lift up the name of the Lord this morning. Amen. Yes. How many of you guys know we serve a faithful God? A faithful God, you know? And, and if nothing else, the fact that you are alive and breathing this morning is a testimony of his faithfulness. It's a testimony that says, hey, I still got you. I still got you here for a reason. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to exalt the Lord this morning. So let's go. Yes, I was about to say, I want to invite you guys to clap your hands, to dance, to do whatever it is you need to do to connect this morning with God our Father. Amen. This song goes like this. She says, Nothing's impossible when we believe. Whole chains are breakable when we receive Yahweh. You keep your promises. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, hey. If you said it, we believe it. Say it. Oh, oh, oh. If you said it, we believe it. You're a man of your word. Of your word. All things are possible when we believe. All chains are breakable when we receive the Yahweh. You keep your promises. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. You have this confidence. Whoa. You'll finish what you started. God, you have never failed. You won't start with me. Present in every test. We have this confidence. We have this confidence. You finish what you started. God, you have never failed. You won't start with me. You're present in every step. You're patient in every heartache. God, you have never failed. You won't start with me. If 
If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. I love the part that says we have this confidence you'll finish what you started. Uh, the best part of that part for me though is when he says you've never failed and you won't start with me. Like I'm not the one that you're just going to start saying oh forget about it. He is going to be God. Irrespective of the person he is going to be God and so we can trust that. Amen. Amen. I, there's an echo going on here. I'm not sure where it is, but it is echoing pretty intensely. So hallelujah. We are going to go to our scripture today. It is Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. But here's what I want to ask. A little bit different than what we normally do. I want us to read this together. Amen. Amen? Can we do that? Yeah. yeah. And if you can't read, it's okay. Just smile like you act like you read. We'll, we'll all be together in this. Hallelujah. And it says... Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Amen, right? Hallelujah. Right? Have you ever been in a situation where you're like, is this going to work out? And the, the moment gets so big, you're like, ah. And then when you kind of zoom back a little bit and you just are reminded of, man, I remember when this was happening and this worked out. And then I remember when I was going through this and it, and it, and it worked out. And when we trust God and are reminded of his faithfulness, we can trust that he will continue to show up for us. And sometimes it means just kind of zooming out we get too close to the to the problem last week we did a thing with the youth group where we was talking about when you're in a situation and you, we, we zoomed in on google earth right do you remember a time you had you were offended where were you at and we zoomed into that place right and then we just started zooming out and then you couldn't even see that place anymore we got up there to the whole earth you and it's like wow there's so much it's, it's so much bigger there's so much more going on. There's so much more happening. And when we can zoom out and be reminded of the faithfulness of God, how he's showing up all over, we can trust he's going to show up for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. We can trust he's going to show up for us. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy are you, Lord God. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. <clears throat> Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won for you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never Ready? 
<laughs> and I never will forget Cause you never failed me yet. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness, God. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. Your faithfulness in redemption, your faithfulness in healing mental, physical, spiritual, Lord God. Your faithfulness in providing, Father. Your faithfulness in loving us and showing up for us. Thank you for your faithfulness, Father God. Thank you for your faithfulness in the peace within the middle of the storm. Thank you for your faithfulness, Father God. Thank you for making a way for being God. Thank you for being God. God alone. Thank you for being God alone. That none can compare to. Thank you for being all powerful, all knowing, omnipresent. Thank you, Father God, for being everything that we need. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for caring enough to draw us, Lord God. Thank you for loving us enough to put people in our paths that we didn't even know we needed, Father God. Thank you, Father God. That even in our stubbornness of moments, you still pursue us. had people sowing seeds in my life when I didn't want to be sown into Father God Jesus thank you thank you thank you thank you you are so holy God
God. There is no one else like you. Let the nations declare Thank you. Hallelujah. We just bless you today, oh God, as we come before you this morning. As we come before you in prayer this morning, there may be some here that uh, there are some things in your life that could be overwhelming right now, and you just need prayer. You need to uh, really experience how great God is how his mercies endure, uh, how his mercies are new every morning, um, how great his faithfulness is. I know that through my life, I have been through some things. And I know that as believers, we go through, and sometimes we just need support. We just need someone to say, hey, you can make it through. We need someone to bear that burden with us. And so this morning, um, actually, we're going to do something like totally different, not totally different, but different than we do often. But um, I want you to uh, pray for the person that is next to you. I want you to pray for the person that's next to you. And if you're not next to someone, I need you to get next to someone. And I know that um, it's not all the time that we want to share with someone that we don't know what our burden is. But if you feel at liberty to do that, I want you to do it. But I want us to pray for one another in a way that... you want to reach the heart of God for someone, the Holy Spirit can really speak to us and tell us what is going on in someone's life. And if you feel that God is putting something in your heart, I want you to pray it because you don't know if that's 
what that person needs. And if you if you're off, it's okay. But you might be on. Okay? So I want someone, I want us all um, to pray for someone. There are some people that you don't like to pray, or you may not even think that, why should I pray? But I don't want anybody sitting alone. I want you to go to someone. If there is someone sitting alone, take the initiative, go to them and pray for them. Amen? That's what we're supposed to be, a praying church. Hallelujah. 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 Children, you know how to pray too. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father God, move by your spirit amongst your people, Lord God. Holy Spirit, speak to hearts. Let them speak words of truth. Let them speak words of knowledge. Let them speak words of wisdom over their fellow believers. Holy Spirit, move by your power. Move by your power. Reveal yourself to people as we pray, oh God. Reveal yourself, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as words of encouragement are prayed over one another. Lord, as, as situations, as trials are being prayed over. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, sheyande yahayamase yande didiyayamase. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, Sheyande Ahayamase, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that we are able to pray for one another. We thank you, Lord God, that we are able to lift up one another's burdens. We thank you, Lord God, that you speak to us through uh, other 
Christians, through other believers, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are Lord of all. Lord, I thank you that we are a praying church. I thank you, Lord, that we uh, don't mind interceding and, and praying for one another and bearing one another's burdens, oh God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And we pray and seal all these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. welcome you to the sign of the dove church i want to welcome those of you that are online we are blessed we are glad to have you with us today and for those of you online i just want to say if you live in driving distance we would prefer you be here with us i want to speak to you specifically today you may be new just running through facebook and you happen to see us and we want to invite you to come and be a part of a body that loves people. Hallelujah. So for those of you that are here today, is there anyone here that this is your first time being with us? It's your very first time. Oh, praise God. We have a visitor on this side. I didn't, yeah, I should ask that again. But I'm looking in the balcony and everybody up there I know. Oh, praise God. So what do we say to our visitors? We love you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we do mean that. Hallelujah. So we are going to continue our service. We're going to continue our worship with offering. Um, you know, as we were, as we were um, singing this morning, and we were just singing about how God has blessed us. We have sing we're singing about how God has been faithful to us, and we were singing about how great God is and how mighty He is, and how His um, mercy endures forever in our lives. I just had this thought. How faithful are we when it comes to giving? The problem is you can't get excited if you're not doing it. If you're not faithful in your giving, you can't get excited. But how many of us are excited about giving God actually a dime off of every dollar that you earn. How, how many of us are excited about that? How many of us are excited about, I only have to give God a dime and I can keep the 90 cents, even though I can't even get a burger anymore for 90 cents. But you could do more with 90 cents than you can with 10 cents. And the thing about it is this, is that when we give to God and we give him that portion, and um, there are there are many people that say now that really we're supposed to give more than the tithe. And we are because it was our tithe and our offering, you know. But you, why do we give to God 
We give to God because of his faithfulness to us and what he has. Uh, no, I, forgive me. I just lied to you. We don't give to God because of his faithfulness to us. We don't give to God because he said that he will give back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, that he will cause men to give to our bosom. That's not why we give to God. And if that is why you do it, may God change your attitude because you're really only giving to get. I'm glad that I am the mother of this church and I could say what I want to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but we, when we give, it should be out of our hearts. I give because I love you, Lord. That's why I give. Not because I'm going to get back, but just like any good father, that's what he's going to do. That's what he does. That's I just want to give this one little short little testimony thing, and it isn't even really my testimony. But at one point, the worship leader we had today was over the youth group, and he um, used to do youth conferences with our youth, but it took money, and, like, you want to do it right, so you have flyers and all these different things that you need um, printed up and that for advertising, right? So he met a man I don't know how he got in contact with the gentleman, but the gentleman offered to do his flyers and the media things that he needed to be done. At that time, it wasn't digital, but regardless. And the gentleman told him this. He said, I'm going to give you my time. He was not a Christian. He said, I'm going to give you my time. Because there's something that I have learned. He said, there's a word that I have learned. I don't even know how to say it properly, but it's T-I-T-H-E. And if I give 10% of my money, if I'm, no, that, he didn't say 10%. He said, when I need money, I give money. It's a principle of God, people. He said, and when I need time, I give time. And right now, I'm giving you time because that's what I need. So he donated his time. And when we are, when we are giving, it doesn't matter if you know the Lord or not. When you give, it's, it is going to come back because it's a principle. It's a principle. So as you get ready to give today, Oh, they're bringing the baskets, slowly but surely. As you give today, give out of faithfulness. Give out of your love. So it may be more than a dime for every dollar that you earned. It may be 25 cents for every dollar that you earn. Because when you are giving, you really are giving to God and making sure that the house of God is taken care of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So can we stand? There are several ways that you can give. You have um, QR codes on the board. If you like using the post office, you can mail it or you can bring it to the um, baskets. I like to bring mine to the basket. I like to bring my offering, not send my offering. But to those of you online, we'd love for you to bring it, but please send it. All right. Father, we thank you. We thank you for um, the ability to give. We thank you for all that you have given to us. And this that we're going to do today is just a small 
token to you of our appreciation. It's a small token of us showing our love for you and our gratitude for who you are and how you have watched over us. Lord, even those of us that really aren't walking with you, you have watched over all of us because you created all of us in your image. So, Father, I ask you to bless what is being brought. I ask you, Lord, to give back to those that are giving more than they could even have expected. And let their eyes be open to see, Lord, that you are moving in their lives in more than just financial ways, but in every aspect of their life as they come and bring to you and some even sacrificially. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Oh, you may come, the children up to 11 may go downstairs, but you can come and bring your offering first. Good job, Mama. Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. Praise God. Well, it's always good to have this time to be together, to get into God's Word together. We, uh, last week, if you were here, I mentioned that we wanted to focus this month around various aspects of giving. And last week I talked about the importance of us giving our gifts, our spiritual gifts, and fulfilling the role that we have as part of the body of Christ. We were in 1 Corinthians 12. Today we're going to talk about a different aspect of giving, the one that you usually think of when you think of giving, giving our resources, our money. So thank you, Apostle Deborah, for the appetizer. Now it's time for the entree. Y'all ready for this? For some reason, there's like this stigma in church that we don't like to talk about giving. But we're okay with talking about praise and worship and loving each other. And shouldn't we be uncomfortable talking about all areas of our spiritual maturity and living out the call that God has for us? Amen? Okay, good. I'm trying to build up a few amens now because later, y'all might not like me. But it's not me, it's just the word. So let's, let's give some grace, amen? Praise God. So here's what I want you to do. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And today we're going to talk about giving generously. Giving generously. And praise God, we've got a, a great example here. One of the early churches that committed themselves to following the Lord. And Paul is, is writing to the church in Corinth to have them see the example from the church in Macedonia, this church that was spirit-led and compassion-driven. 
the same kind of church that we're trying to be. And he sh- they give us a great example of what it looks like to give generously. So let me start chapter 8, 2 Corinthians. I'm going to go from 1 to 7 to begin. And I'm reading from the NIV translation this morning. It says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. And here's verse 7. But since you excel in everything... In faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in love we have kindled in you. See that you also excel in this grace of giving. That's the challenge for us today as a church. Just like he was challenging the, the, the churches in the area of Corinth. We have to see that we're excelling that we're going above and beyond, that we're doing more than is expected. We are excelling in our giving, that giving is generous, just like the other areas. Oh, it's, it's good that we know the word. It's good that we talk like a believer. It's good that we're diligent and faithful. It's good that we're love, loving and we're all of those things. But to be a fully complete, spirit-led, compassion-driven church, we also have to excel in our giving. Amen. It's got to be generous. So let's, look at, let's, let's go through these verses a little bit. I'm going to make a few points to you today. Here's my first one. Giving generously is the product of grace and joy. My God. Giving generously is the product of grace and joy. Go back to verse 1. Notice how this all starts. It says it was a grace, the grace that God had given those churches. It started from the grace. This is the idea of God's favor. That he has extended to us. It's a, it's a loving kindness that where God leans in and shares himself with us. They had the grace. They had the favor. They had the loving kindness of the Lord. Now, if their example is not good enough, let's look at Jesus' example and how this shows us what grace really is. Look at verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich... Yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty, so that you, excuse me, through his poverty might become rich. This is, this is God's grace. This is why we're all here. This is the story of salvation. This is Jesus choosing to leave the riches of heaven that are beyond we, what we can ever imagine to come to earth through, through a manger, lowly, humble, to serve, to give up his life even though he had no sin. He was perfect. He let himself be nailed on the cross. He bled for us. He, he died. He rose again. All of that. He gave up all that he had so that we could experience the riches. Not financially, but the spiritual blessings of all eternity, the the goodness, the favor, the loving kindness, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness of God. It started with grace. So all of this begins with grace. So if you don't have God's grace, if you don't understand what God's grace is, if you haven't experienced it, then you won't be generous. You won't have a reason to give. But if you've experienced God's grace... And I know somebody in here has like experienced the grace of God because you, you knew you didn't deserve his love. You weren't worthy of his love. You've, you've made so many mistakes. You've lived in rebellion to God. You've been disobedient to his word. At least I have so many times and God extended his grace over and over again. So then we add in the second element, joy, not just joy, but overwhelming joy. See, verse 2 says that, that even in the midst of this, they had an overflowing joy. The joy is a response to having received the grace and the favor. 
So if you recognize what you've received, if you understand that you weren't deserving of God's grace, that you deserve death and separation from God, that you don't deserve anything you have, you don't deserve the house, the car, the wife, the kids, the, the, the good job, you don't deserve good health, you, don't, you know you didn't earn it, you don't deserve it, so the natural thing is you have joy. Because you're responding to that grace that he's given you. Yes. Joy that's overflowing. I don't know about you, but I've got a whole lot of reason to have a whole lot of joy. My now here's where, here's where it comes together. So they received the grace. They had the joy. And what did that produce? It produced generosity. Now, I'm going to take you guys back to class. Some of y'all may have never had chemistry class, but we're going to keep it really simple, okay? I think it's the next slide. Let me give you a, just a simple spiritual chemical equation, okay? You have two reactants that when they react with each other, it creates a product. So you've got grace, G-R, combined with joy, J-Y, and you've got G-R-J-Y, which is the, the spiritual chemical symbol for generosity, at least in my textbook. Those things react together. They're present together. And it naturally then produces something new. Some of y'all heard of H2 plus O, right? Equals H2O. You had hydrogen, you had oxygen. Now you got this thing called water. You got grace. You got joy. You combine them together. It produces generosity. It's just a natural spiritual law. That's how it's supposed to go. You combine those things together and, you know, I don't want to get too much into the science, but, you know, they have to have a balanced equation. So you got to have, it's got to either be positive or negative and the neutrons, well, this is positive because it has a positive impact on all those around you. And all of those elements are made up of atoms, not the A-T-O-M, but the second atom, A-D-A-M, who's balanced both sides. And so it's infused by Jesus. And so now you've got this perfectly balanced equation. But we like to sometimes get it off balance. We think that it's not enough. Go to the next slide. So we want to sometimes add in other things. See, we think that we've got to have grace and joy and I've got to be happy. And then I can be generous. But he said that this church, they were in the midst of severe, very severe trial. Most of us haven't been in a very severe trial. You've been in a little bit of a severe trial. But he said, in spite of that... They didn't, they didn't have to be happy to be able to be generous. Well, it also said they were living in extreme poverty, so they had no money. They didn't need a, the catalyst of money to come into the equation to produce generosity. So the grace and the joy stood on their own, whether you have money or not, whether you're happy or not, whether you're in the midst of a trial or it's good, whether you're in a storm or you're in the calm of the screen fields. It doesn't matter because all it takes is the combination of the grace and the joy that responds to that and it produces generosity. Yes, sir. That's yes, what it sir. is. Now, this is not just a small equation that comes out and sprinkles itself a little bit. No, this is, this is something significant because it, it creates an abundance. Yeah. An abundant grace. An abundant grace isn't even a big enough word to describe the grace we've got from Jesus, but an abundant grace with an abundant, overflowing joy produces an abundant or rich generosity. It doesn't happen in small measure. That's what he's saying here. So when he's telling them in verse 7 to excel, that word means to abound, to overflow, to be, to be like, it's super abounding. It's like, it's, it's like a tidal wave of generosity because you have so much grace and so much joy mixed together that it goes over and above and it goes beyond. Look at what it says about this church as this example for us. It says that they gave as much as they were able, even beyond their ability. Beyond their ability. So they, they, they made a great sacrifice. They, they found some way, even in extreme poverty and significant trial, to go above and beyond. To go overboard. To overflow. Verse 5 says that they exceeded our expectations. We knew their situation. We didn't expect them to be so generous. Yeah. Well, let's look, let's look at why. 
My second point. Next slide, please. Giving generously is a heart issue. Apostle Deborah already told us that, so you got it down already. It's a heart issue. This is where it starts, what's going on within us, where are we at in our heart, where are we at with our relationship, our connection with the Lord. Go to chapter 9 and look at verse 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Heard that verse many times, but do we really think about what it's saying here? This is a issue of the heart the joy comes from what's in your heart the grace has touched your heart the joy responds to it and it produces a a heartfelt response that's generosity not reluctantly meaning i'm not i'm not doing it you know all grudgingly i guess i better should give today because sister sally might notice if i don't put something in the offering and she might think i'm not a good christian Oh, I don't, man, I'm going to regret this later, but I guess I won't go to lunch today. Let me give this $10. And we, then we complain about it. Man, why, why is church always asking for money every week? They got to talk about offerings. What? We act like, we act like giving sometimes is like a tax. I don't know about y'all, I don't like taxes. I mean, I understand the purpose, but I don't like paying them. I'd rather have that money. But do we treat God's house like that too? Well, I guess this is a tax I got to pay. Reluctantly, grudgingly, painfully, with complaints. He said, no, that's not what it's supposed to be. It's not also not supposed to be under compulsion. So let me just let me just sort of point this out because some places pastors have messed this up. Teachers, preachers have messed this up, trying to trying to guilt you into giving. If you don't give a hundred dollars today, you can't leave this church. Pastor got to have a new car before y'all get to go home today. Or even just, man, you know, if you don't give, we're not going to let you do this. We have to bring a curse upon you if you don't give that dime. My God. I don't, he said not under compulsion. So don't be influenced by what I say, what Apostle Deborah says. I mean, if it's truth, receive it. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation and compulsion. The spirit is the one that convicts your heart. The compulsion messes with your emotions. So if you're driven to give by fear and judgment, you, you, somebody's messed you up. Come on. Mm. Mm. True. Not compelled, not pressured by somebody else. What your heart has decided, what is the spirit leading you to do? As you're, if you're honest, if you're listening, if you've got a relationship, Connection. Connection. Now, let me say this, too, because some of y'all are going to get free from this. That compulsion also means not just because somebody has a need. Uh-oh. So they're on the street corner. They're walking up to the front of the church. They knock on your door. or you, that, that, one, that one uncle calls you who's always asking for something. You don't have to feel compelled to respond just because someone presents a need to you. Because then you're still giving out of guilt or, well, if I don't do it. Now, if God gives you a conviction and lays it on your heart, give. But just because there's a need, some people have a need every day, and if you keep giving to them, they're going to they're gonna like you a lot, but their need isn't going to change because they're, you're, you're not helping them. So God, there's, there's, there's some wisdom in the working of my heart. God, what's, what's going to be a blessing and best for this person? It might not be to give them some cash. I'm just saying. So be free. You don't, you don't have to give to everyone who asks. Even people in the church. Some of the people in here can testify. I've told them, tell that person no. And I believe I'm very generous. And I've told them to tell them no because they're trying to take advantage of you and they're becoming dependent upon you. It's not helping them. They didn't pay you back the last time. Why are you giving them more? Well, bless the Lord. Let me move on. Let me get another one in here. Verse 8 of chapter 8. I am not commanding you. It's not a command. Uh It's not a rule where you just have to obey because, yes, master. 
It's not a command. He says, I'm not commanding you. But what is he trying to do? I'm trying to, to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. I'm using them as an example, not so that you see the rule and you just line up like a robot and do it, but I want to know what's in your heart. Is it out of love? Are you giving to somebody else's need because of your love for God and your love for them? Not because you're trying to be a rule follower. Look, it would be easier if God just gave us these rules, for some, for, especially for those of us who are like rule followers, okay? I'm kind of, a, I'm kind of that way, right? God, give me a checklist and... and Hopefully I'll follow it. At least I know. Well, it's not always that easy. It's not just a yes or no, but I, I've got, I, you want my heart. Oh, you don't want me to be a robot and just respond like the text. You want me to have a heart and a relationship with you and a connection with you so that my generosity flows from my love. Yes. Yes. Some of us, that's harder. I'd rather just check a box. I'd rather just do the law rather than live under grace. Because it's, it's, it's more complicated. you got to get inside my heart instead of me just putting down what's easy and checking a box. How many of you know, some of, you, some of us know this. We were kids. Some of us still act like this. And we have kids. You know you can obey and still not do it out of love. You can obey and do what you're told and have a nasty attitude. And not really want to do it, but you just didn't want the whooping. God's not trying to get you to give to others so you don't get a whooping. But we act like that. I'm just saying, I've been in church a long time. I've seen it. I've done it. Galatians 5.13, it's not on the board, but let me just read it real quick. It says this, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. We're free. God saved us by grace. He's given us freedom. He wants us to walk in this world. And this life of the Spirit is a life of being free. But he's saying don't use that selfishly. Use it to share with one another. Let's keep going in chapter 8, 10 through 12. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. So now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Did you see what he's saying here? First he's saying there's two parts of this. You gotta have the willingness, you gotta have the attitude, the heart to do it, and then you gotta do some action. You can't just, oh, I really wish I could give to them today. And then just sit back and not give when you have something. So there's some action. But he's saying the attitude and the action are what is important, not the amount. Well, It's based on what you have. You you don't have $1,000. You can't give $1,000. But what is your attitude? What is your your willingness? What is your desire to give? That word willingness is really what, what do you have a passion about? Where are you eager? You're ready. You just come in here. Oh, I can't wait till somebody comes up there and brings the baskets because I really want to bless somebody today. Mm. I got $5, but man, I can't wait. Somebody might need this $5 today. It's not the amount. We know, we see stories in scriptures, right? The, The widow gave two mites and she gave more than all those Pharisees because she had the willingness to sacrifice and give what she had. Right, right. It's a... It's a get to, not a got to. I don't got to do this. I get to do this. I get to touch somebody else. I get to bless somebody else. I get to share the love and grace that God has given to me. See, it says God loves a cheerful giver. That means he's taking pleasure into those who are giving out of their joy. They're ready and willing. They're passionate about it. They've got a joy, whether they're broke or they're a billionaire. It's the heart of what we're motivated by, what our desire is, what we're willing to do versus what we're not willing to do. Yes, sir. He says about this church, again, look at their example. It says they did it entirely on their own. Hold up, preacher. We can, have, we can collect an offering and we don't have to make a big appeal? The people just can come? 
Pastor Corey, we could save like 10 minutes in service. People could just come and they could just give on their own. We could have boxes in the back and people would just be pouring into them and nobody would take it. That wasn't supposed to. Entirely on their own. In fact, they went beyond that. They says that they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service. It's a privilege. It's a gift. I get to worship God in this way. I get to extend the love that he's given to me. I get to show grace to others because he's done it for me. It's a privilege because I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have this. I shouldn't be able to share it. So I'm grateful for this privilege because I could, I could have nothing. I could be lost. I could be hurting. I could be in a dark space. But God has given me joy. He's given me grace. And he's given me something. So I, you, 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 you can't stop a person who's full of grace and joy from giving. Yes, yes. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? How? Could they do this? I think the key is verse 5. And for it says they exceeded our expectation. It says they gave themselves, first of all, to the Lord. First of all, they gave themselves to the Lord. It all starts there. It, it begins out of your devotion, your surrender, your commitment, your gratitude, your connection, your love for the Lord is where it all starts. Otherwise, you're manipulating something else. But if you've got that, if, it, if it's beginning, if you're connected, if you're spirit-led, if you're praying, if you're seeking Him, if you're in love with Him, even if you're struggling, even if you feel like you stumbled last night, but if you come and say, God, I love you, this is about you first, then you're positioned to be generous. It said they, they first of all were devoted to the Lord and then by the will of God, also to us. Oh, so when I connect with God, I understand His will. And his will is to also care for one another. It's like there's maybe two commandments. You heard of them? Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. God knows we ain't that smart. He kept it simple. If you, if you love God, then his will is that you also love some others. And you could go study about the neighbors. It wasn't the people that you live next to or that you liked. That's a different sermon for a different day. But that's the call. That's the will of God. Oh. Generosity is the will of God, Pastor Corey. Amen. So wouldn't I want to exceed in doing the will of God? Hmm. Praise him. Let me give you another point. Somebody buckle up. Giving generously is an unselfish effort to help others. Okay, y'all good with me so far. Unselfish effort to help others. And I should have added... Potentially at your own expense. Okay. Let me go to 13 through 15. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to just say this now. When you're, when you're reading this, when you're asking the Holy Spirit to help you understand this, take off your American glasses. Take off your capitalism, your socialism, your, your whatever your political ideologies are, Republican or Democrat, and, and, and put on the kingdom glasses. That's different. That's calling us to be not the same, but the other. In the world, heaven meeting earth, living out the kingdom of God. So let that, let's read that with kingdom glasses. Because it says, where did, I, where did I want to start? Uh, 13, thank you. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but there, that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is, somebody say it with me, equality. As it is written, the one who gathered did not have too much and the one who gathered, excuse me, the one who gathered much did not have too much and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Well, that sounds very political. and He's saying the goal is that the needs of the body of Christ are prioritized and met by those that may have some extra, that may have, been, have had a little bit more that you can share. 
He's not saying you need to live in poverty so that other people can will live under the welfare of God's kingdom and just be rich and taken advantage of you. He's not saying that. He's not calling you to, to be broke all your life. But what he's saying is that we should care more about the needs of our brothers and sisters who are legitimately lacking and in need of something than we care about having more and more ourselves. So if your more is more important than their lack, you're missing it. You're following a different ideology. That's not kingdom ideology. Now, I know that's tough because that doesn't mesh with what I've learned in all of my, you know, American culture and society that I got to get more and I got to take care of my own and I've got to build up, you know, this capitalistic structure. And, but he's saying... The others are more important. And if I, and if I love you and you're lacking and I've got it, he's not, he's not, he's not even saying make yourself naked by giving him all your clothes. But if I got a rack of clothes and you over here shirtless, let me give you one of my shirts. And actually, let me give you one of my good ones, not the one I don't want. I'm going to get to that one. It's not a goodwill mentality. It's good works. <laughs> we want to give the scraps. Anyway, I, that's, man, I could preach like four sermons right now. What he's really saying is, do you care about your brother and sister more than getting your own? Getting your extra? You want to have the, the, the 20 ounce porterhouse and these brothers and sisters haven't had meat in months. But you gotta, you wanna build up that, that freezer full of those things. Oh my God, come on. Hmm. What if, what if we operated in the way that he was calling us to? Where we didn't hold on and hoard our plenty, but we learned to live in, dare I say it, contentment. <laughs> and share from our surplus. How might our giving look different if we evaluated our situation from God? Where do I have surplus and, and what can I do with that? And if I don't have a lot of surplus, God, help me to get more surplus so I can help more people. And I'll, and I'll confess to you, I, even as faithful givers, I know for me, it, 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 can, it can sort of get into a routine where I'm, I'm just giving that check, I'm giving that amount, and and I, I need to, God convicted me, you need to sit down and look at what surplus do you really have and what are you doing with it? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, might, I might feel generous, but maybe I could be more generous. Yeah. Mm. And here's why. Here's the last point. Giving generously is going to produce an abundant harvest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Now, I want to see where you think I'm going with this. Let's read chapter 9, verse 6, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Now, we're not farmers, but I, although I think you guys understand this, let's just make sure we're clear. He's talking about sowing and reaping. He's using it as an example, right, to show what the principle is, what we're committed to. Sowing, simply put, was a spreading or a scattering of seed. It actually referred to the motion that you would do with your hand, right? You, when you're like, some of y'all seen it on TV at least, right? Tossing out seeds. Some of y'all gardeners or farmers, you know what I'm talking about. There's a spreading and a scattering of seed. Sowing. Okay? Going out, spreading out into some kind of ground, some kind of soil. Sowing. And then, so if you do that sparingly, you're kind of stingy with maybe one seed, right? Come over here. Well, you know, I got, I got a couple dozen. Here, here's another one. You're holding back the spreading or the scattering of your seed. The reaping is, of course, the part we like. What you gather, right? What you harvest. After the seeds have been planted, eventually it produces a harvest. Sounds good, right? Everybody wants an abundant harvest. Everybody wants, everybody wants an abundant blessing. Well, what is he saying? What kind of harvest is he talking about? 
Because this verse, this passage, often gets misrepresented. Go with me, and don't trust me. Let's just read the word together, okay? Look at verse 8. And let's start with the first part of it. It says, and God is able to bless you abundantly. Yes, pastor, I told you. The word says, if I, if I give, I'm going to be abundantly blessed. Ready to, to, to serve in the church of the prosperity gospel. Things come with, money come with, it all come with. I'm going to be blessed abundantly. You said, it's right there, preacher. Well, keep going. Keep going. You, you, you memorize those seven words, but what does it say after that? Pastor Corey, here's your favorite words in the scripture. So that. So that. Somebody say, so that. so that. You know what that means, right? You know what that means, right? It's like, here's the purpose. Oh, so I'm blessed abundantly so that, so that. in all things, hey. at all times, hey. having all that you need. Here it goes. Get ready. You will abound in every good work. My God. So, so. God is able to bless you abundantly. A better translation of that is God is making his grace abound to you. That's what most of the translations say. If you look at the root, it's God is making his grace abound to you. He's overflowing his grace to you, his favor, his kindness, his love, so that you overflow and abound in good works. Somebody show me where the stuff was in there. Where did you get your stuff in that package? Where did it say overflowing with mansions and cars and riches? I don't see it. Now, I'm going to come back to him covering what you need. But he's making that grace abound to you so that you can overflow. Overflow. Not, 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 Not just drip. A few good works. Well, you know, there was that one time, that church on the corner over there, they did that one good thing 10 years ago. <laughs> Overflowing, overabundant. See, abundant grace results in abundant generosity. Awesome. It's excessive. Awesome. It's extra. It's doing too much. Come on. Come on. Yes. Why are those people always giving those dudes on the street meals to eat and clothes to wear. Why, why are they feeding people? Why, why, why are they helping people when they get, come out of the hospital? Why are they doing all that? It's extra. Yeah, it is extra. It's excessive. It's generosity. Hallelujah. Now, let me help us a little bit more because the purpose is not for the good things. It's for the good works. The, the actions that are good from God's heart. He's going he's to help us with this a little bit more. Now, here's where it gets extra good. I hope you all like this one too. Verse 10. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. Okay, let me stop there. He's supplying two things. Seed. Somebody help me out. What's the purpose of the seed? Sow, so, scatter, spread, give out. Share, okay, and bread for food. We like the bread. Look, he's saying, I'm going to meet your needs. I'm not leaving you hungry and broke. I'm I'm supplying bread for you to eat. It says in in verse 8 that you'll have all that you need. So he's not dismissing providing for your needs. He's just not not saying he's giving you everything you want or that you desire. He's saying, I'm taking care of your needs. I'm giving you all that you need. I'm giving you bread for food. And, I, and, it, and, it, and it could be good food. He's got, Gibbs says in scriptures, right? We can enjoy the food. You can enjoy the bread that you're given in your life. The supply of God can take care of you, can help you care for your family and pay for your stuff and, and keep you secure. But he's saying, I'm giving you seed and bread. Okay, you with me so far? Yes, yes. Now look, look at the second part of this. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to what he's about to supply and increase. Because he gave us seed, he gave us bread. Well, what's he saying? I'm going to supply and increase your store of seed. Yeah. Well, you wanted the version that said he'll supply your store of bread and increase your bread. But he's saying, I'm going to increase your store of seed. Hey. Which is for what? 
sowing, giving, spreading, sharing, planting, right? So you will have supply and increase. For what reason? And will he will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Wait, not the harvest of my riches? Not the harvest of my thingdom that I want to rule and reign over? Not even the harvest of my resources, but the harvest of your righteousness. Sowing the seeds in generous ways produces a harvest of things that are right to God. Things that are pleasing to God. You do those things he wants you to do. They, they honor God because they're like him. Because you're operating in the way that Jesus operated towards you. You're extending love and grace as you give generously. And so you get a great harvest of righteousness. Others look around and say, man, he's doing so many good things. He's loving so many people. He's blessing so many. It's a wow. That church really is compassion driven. There's a harvest of righteousness. We see goodness of God popping up in all sorts of places in all sorts of ways because the seed has been planted. It's been sown. And so it produces a harvest of righteousness. Doing what is right, what's just, what's fair, what's considerate of others even above ourselves. What's sacrificial, what's loving, ultimately, all the things that God approves of. I don't know about you, but I want to harvest what God approves of. I want to have a crop that's, that's holy and righteous and, and as a sweet aroma to his nostril and tastes good in his mouth. But it comes from sowing the seed, not just eating the bread. See, let me, let me help us because... Y'all need a visual because this is our bread and we're not farmers anymore. So we don't carry around seed in our pockets. We think we just carry around bread. I mean, right? So God is, if God has given you a, a good allotment, he already told us some of it's for bread and some of it's for seed. So we could still take care of our needs and, and cover those things and protect and provide and all of that. But then there's some surplus. There's some seed that has the purpose to be shared. So if that's the case, how come so often we eat our seed? We consume our own seed. We, we tuck away our own seed because we want it to be bread. So now I got all this bread in my pocket. Uh, My my pocket is thick. I've got all this bread. I'm eating good. But I ate my seed. Come on. You spoke a word right there. Come on. And I'm producing a harvest of selfishness, not righteousness. But I'm good. My spiritual belly fed good, and the flesh I'm fed good. My God, so you're selfish, and now you can't have a harvest of righteousness. But you fool, can't take none of it to heaven. But you fool. Now here's the second part, because there's two so that's. Read verse 11 with me in chapter 9. He continues to build on this. He says, you will be enriched. Oh, bless the Lord. In every way, because y'all didn't get it the first time. Here it is. So that, tell your neighbor, so that. So that that you can be generous on every occasion. Does does, does somebody's version say on on occasional occasions? Every Every occasion. So that you can be generous on every occasion. He, He told them again, the first so that. And now he's about to give them the second one. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got a harvest of righteousness 
because I gave generously on every occasion. And now God gets thanksgiving because others are experiencing that. Y'all want to know how this works? Let me help you out. If I spread my seed, somebody's going to be grateful. And they might just be so grateful that they give God thanks. I think y'all need a double portion. Let me, let me hit somebody else. I know y'all all got your hands out now. <laughs> Help the young people. Bless them, Lord. Y'all going to split this at home? Who's more generous? Okay, I trust you. Hey. I don't know if that was selfish or generous, but <clears throat> y'all can work it out. I think mom and dad got a store, a store of seeds somewhere. They can help you. Hey, so were y'all grateful? I thought somebody would actually like stand up or shout or something. I mean, I know it wasn't passing out hundreds, but I was going to start with dollars. I gave y'all 20s. <laughs> somebody, got a, somebody got a 10, I think. So you're, you, you bless others, and then they say, oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. They see your grace was acted out, and, and you had joy, and you became generous. Now they've got a reason to say, wow, that God is good. Look at his love in this, this crazy preacher. Look at, look at this blessing that I received that I didn't expect to come today. I came to give, but he allowed me to receive. Bless the Lord. Maybe I had a need. Now I can go get some lunch or I don't know what you needed, but, but God pours out his blessing. Look at 14 and 15 of 9. It says, and then in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing Actually, let me go back. I'm sorry. I wanted to read 12 and 13. Did I read that yet? Thank you for helping me, wife. Okay. 12, let me start in 12. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, which is a great thing just by itself, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, Others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. Your generosity is a confession of the gospel. Does your giving speak to the gospel? Does it confess to others that I got the good news, so let me share the good works? My God. You don't need to confess it verbally, but some of y'all would just, well, I believe that because I just received. You didn't want me to say I love you. You wanted me to give you a $20 bill. It was a confession of grace and generosity. And for your generosity and sharing with them and with everyone else. And then check this out how it kind of all goes full circle as we wrap this up. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you. Because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. He started chapter 8 with grace. He ends chapter 9 with God's grace. The circle of grace. We receive it from the Lord. It, it stirs up the joy within us. That leads to a rich generosity. That leads to others' needs being met. And has a practical so that. That turns into a harvest of righteousness that God is pleased with. And then be in addition to that, others get to thank God. They get to praise God. They get to give God glory. And they see the grace. That we've all been given. That we all live under. The same grace that he extended on the cross, he extends to us today. And that's where we operate from. That's where we give from. We give from what started with his grace. Hmm. Let 
Minister Marcus, can you bring me, can you bring me one of those baskets? We might need two. I want to leave with a practical application. Uh, one of my brothers has a need, and I'm going to have him come forward, even though he doesn't know it's about to happen. And I want to give us an opportunity. Let's take this out. I think this was for the other offer. I want us to just have an opportunity. I'm not going to compel you. I'm not going to twist your arm. I'm going to tell you, give what you want. Give what the Spirit has put on your heart when we take this offering. We'll share the need. You pray. You decide how you want to give. Wilson, do you mind coming up? Wilson. In the back, right behind you, Will. Wilson, come here, man. I know you didn't know I was going to do this. You don't mind coming up, do you? Too late. I'm not going to make you talk. This is Wilson, y'all. He's, he's pretty new to attending the church. He's part of our rope program. He had a, a car accident recently, and he had insurance, but as y'all know, they don't like to pay for everything. So he, he needed $1,000, yeah. and he doesn't have it right now. Anybody been there? Okay, so okay, no judgment. We, we all broke too, bro. It's okay. I just want us to, to bless him today. That's it. So I'm going to give us a moment to just seek the Lord and what he would want you to give today to help our brother so that when he leaves, he can pay that off and not have to stress about it. Yep. Is that all right? Yeah, fine. <laughs> let's, let's just take a moment because I, I want this to be from the Spirit. I'm, I, I, we share the need, but you guys just choose how you want to respond. Show us, Lord, what you want us to give. And allow us to be generous and to be a blessing, Lord God. Speak to us, Lord, through your spirit. So whenever you're ready, you can come up, and if you have, you, you mind holding this? I want you to receive this, brother. God loves you. He's got you. Thank you. Yeah. So if you want to give Cash App or online because you don't have cash but you want to bless him, just, just put in a memo special offering and I'll make sure he gets it. write a check, write it to sign the dub, and we'll make sure he gets it. want those 20s back. So keep them or give them. Hit the, whatever you Lord leads you. Well, I was getting a check, so should we just put them in the basket? And yeah, you're gonna... I'm going to have them count it. Yes, ma'am. Father, we thank you for your love that you've shown to us.
God, and today I hope that we've experienced that it is a privilege to be able to share what we have and to show love and to confess the gospel of the good news. So God, I thank you for my brother Wilson today. God, I pray that this would be more than he needs and that you would help him to have enough. God, you can just reassure him of your love and the call and the purpose that you have on his life. Lord, and this would just God, be a blessing to his heart as it is to his physical body. Thank you for the generous givers that are here today. God, we want to produce a harvest of righteousness where others can look at our lives and say, by the grace of God, look how giving they are. Look how generous they are. Look at their joy that they share with one another. Look how they care for one another. Strengthen us to do that today and each day going forward, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My God. Take it to this young man in the suit. Let's put it in the office because I want to put it together and count up the checks and make sure we get it all to him appropriately. And there may have been someone cash up and pay for it. Praise the Lord. Can we give God praise? Hallelujah. Hmm. I'm just standing up here holding back my tears. Praise the Lord. Hey, amen. That's all I got. Yes, Lord. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Somewhere it says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Ain't lying. Ain't lying. Praise the Lord. Praise God. My God. Hey. We just want to be God's people. So if, we're, if you're challenged today, it's okay. If you're convicted today, it's okay. There's grace for that too. But we want to live out and we want to excel in all of what he's called us to. Amen? Amen. Next, next Sunday, we're going to spend the Sunday thanking God. I know the roots of Thanksgiving ain't, ain't really what it is. For us and what we celebrate, but we're, we're celebrating thanking God for all he's done for us. So we're going to have a special service next week. We're going to have some, some time with testimonies. If anyone wants to be baptized, we're going to do a baptism. So sign up in the back because right now we don't have names, but we don't want to miss anyone because there's no greater Thanksgiving than, than confessing your faith before the Lord. We'll have communion. It'll be a beautiful day together. We're also, if you remember, we're asking you to invite people to come, and we want to bless them when they leave with a Thanksgiving basket. Just showing our generosity. God's blessed us. We want to give something back to you. So we, we had hoped that by today you would be able to tell us, hey, I've got, you know, like two families coming. So if you know that already, please tell Laura in the back before you leave so we can get an idea of how many we need. But don't let that hold you back. Even if you got to invite them last minute, we're, we're, God's going to provide. Because so many of you have already signed up to, to donate a basket. Uh, it's not too late, right, Laura? We can still take more. If you want to donate a basket or if you know you can't shop and you just want to say, here, here's X number of dollars. Let, let somebody go shop and fill up a basket for me. We'll take it because we want to just give away as much as we can. I've got some other guys on our rope program that I want to take baskets to. We want to just be able to bless as many people as we can. But well, we want you to invite them and let them come and connect with us so we can share our love in person as well. But if they can't make it and you still want to bless them, you can take it home and drop it off to them on your way or whatever. We'll, we'll accommodate, but that's a little the way we're doing it this year. Does that make sense? So invite people, sign up in the back. Uh, we also need some helpers to come early next Sunday at 8 o'clock for the first, you know, before service so we can get everything together in the dove room and have it all orderly uh, so that we're prepared to distribute the baskets after service. So you can sign up back there. If you have any questions, uh, Laura, our usher is in the back, and hopefully she knows the answer. If she doesn't, I'm sure she'll find it out. So everybody clear on that? Are we excited? Are we excited? Amen. Anything else? Oh, you want to talk about a lot, sir? Yes. Anything yes, else you yes. want to talk about? I'm going to talk about the Allot's Dance Show. Um, Allot's Dance Show is happening this Saturday. Please get your tickets. Amen. It's going to be amazing. 
The program we have put together, there's about 17 dance numbers in this show. It's the most we've ever had, um, and it's going to be so exciting. We would love for you to uh, be able to come and be a part of this. It seats 425 at the theater. It is not going to be here. This will be the first time ever that we've never done the show here. We're doing it in Zion at the Christian Arts Auditorium. Yes, you heard that right. Christian Arts Auditorium. Auditorium specifically set up for Christian events. Praise the Lord. And so we'll be at the Christian Arts Auditorium in Zion. It seats 425. Let's fill the place. Bring all of your unsaved people that you know so they can be touched by the Spirit of God as they participate in this show. Testimony, uh, the Allots Dance Show happened in Kenosha. There were 16 kids that were part of the program, and it was over 100 people that attended that performance for 16 kids. And those lives were touched so much. They were so blessed by this program. And so we praise God for the generosity of just even the arts being poured out of this ministry. And so we praise God and give him glory for all of that. So next Saturday, the show will be 6 o'clock, only one performance. It'll be in Zion. Would love for you to be a part of it. Would you all please stand? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you want me to go ahead? And... Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, um, I don't know about y'all, but I really, I, I needed to shout and dance. And so once I dismiss, I'm going to put on some shout music. I do not want nothing else played. Praise the Lord, because I, I need to go in. So, and I plan to. Bless the name of Jesus. So let us lift our hands before the Lord. Father, we want to thank you for your blessing today, oh God. Father, we have been so impacted by your message today. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, that you would continue to work in our hearts, oh God. Father, thank you for the increase so that we can do more, oh God. Father, we're looking for the greater, Lord God, so that we can participate in building your kingdom today, oh God. So Father, have your way in us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every heart say, amen and amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day in the Lord. In the name of Jesus.